Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about how to handle no shutdown in Kubernetes. My name is Xin Yang. I work at VMware in the Cloud Native Storage team. I'm also a co-chair of Kubernetes Six Storage. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashutos. I work at VMware on Cluster Lifecycle team. And I'm here to talk about nodes are down in Kubernetes. Over to you, Zing. You can get started. Here's our agenda today. We're going to talk about what is a graceful node shutdown, what is a non-graceful node shutdown. We will talk about how to handle them. We'll give a demo, and we will talk about next steps. In a Kubernetes cluster, it is possible for a node to shut down. This could happen either in a planned way, or it could happen unexpectedly. A no shutdown could happen for many reasons. It could be that you need to apply a security patch, you need to do your kernel upgrade, you need to reboot a node, or it could be due to the preemption of the VM instances, or it could be that there's a hardware failure or some software problem that causes that to happen. You can trigger no shutdown by uh, run a, a shutdown or power off command, or just physically push a button to shut down the, the machine. Uh, no shutdown, uh, if you do that without draining the nodes, then that could uh, cause uh, workload failures. A no shutdown could either be graceful or non graceful. Let me talk about graceful no shutdown first. Graceful no shutdown feature was introduced in Kubernetes 1.20 release and it moved to beta in 1.21. This allows Kubelet to detect a no shutdown and properly terminate the pods, make sure all the resources are released before the real shutdown. And pods are terminated in two phases, first the regular pods and then the critical pods to make sure that the critical function of the application can work as long as possible. Without this feature, users have to uh, make sure they manually join the nodes before uh, shutting down the node. However, no shutdown could happen uh, unexpectedly. In that case, uh, the pods could be evicted unsafely if the node is not joined, and your application would see errors, and your workloads may not function properly. So let's talk about how the graceful no shutdown works. Uh, for this feature, Kubelet relies on the systemd's inhibitor lock mechanism. Uh, when Kubelet starts, it acquires this uh, delay type initiator lock, and it watches for the shutdown events. When it detects a shutdown, it delays the shutdown and uh, terminates the pods make sure everything is released before the real shutdown. There are two config parameters in Kubelet that you need to set for this feature to work. The first one is the shutdown grace period. That's the total duration for both the regular and the critical pods to be terminated. And the second parameter is the shutdown grace period critical pods. That's the time needed for the critical pods to be terminated, and that's always smaller uh, than the total duration. And the graceful node shutdown feature, uh, it works in two phases. The nodes, uh, the pods are terminated in two phases, first the regulars and then the critical pods. But if you want to have more granular control, then there is a, another feature called a pod priority based graceful node shutdown. Uh, that's an alpha feature introduced in 1.23 release. So you can uh, configure your port priority classes into uh, multiple classes types, and then uh, the ports will be shut down in multiple phases, depending on how you define your priority classes. So that's uh, how the graceful shutdown works. Now I'm going to hand it over to Ashtosh to talk about non-graceful no shutdown. Thank you. Um, let's get started on non-graceful shutdown. And 
this is a feature that was introduced in 1.24, and we are targeting beta in 1.26. Uh, Zing just talked about graceful shutdown, and there are scenarios when the shutdown is not so graceful. It could be due to some configuration error or maybe due to a hardware failure. Or if a shutdown is not detected by Kubelet, and this kind of shutdown can be termed as known graceful one, and it can be problem for stateful workloads. Let us see. I've already talked about the system D inhibitor lock. If the shutdown does not trigger inhibitor, inhibitor lock, then it will not be detected by Kubelet. Or if you set shutdown grace period or shutdown grace period critical paths incorrectly, this can also lead to, lead to non-graceful shutdown. And as a side effect of this, what happens is the pod moves to a terminating state, especially the pods that are using volumes. But if the node that went into a known graceful shutdown comes back online, everything just works fine. And let us see why the pod gets stuck in terminating state and what happens next. So here is the experiment that I did like some time back. I used vSphere UI to test that. So I deployed a stateful set and I triggered a shutdown from the vSphere UI button. And that, as a matter of fact, is a non-graceful shutdown. And what I observed is the pod went into terminating state after five minutes. And also what I observed is that pod is stuck in terminating state even after six minutes. I code six minutes here, it is an important number. Uh, I'll come to that later. I did another experiment I again created a stateful set. I did the same shutdown and observed that the pod went into terminating state after almost five minutes. And then I deleted the pod forcefully with a grace period of zero. And what I observed is the pod got scheduled to a different node and it was in container creating state for six minutes, like, but after six minutes, the pod came back online because six minutes is that default time, timeout before the volume get detached from the older style pod. This may not work for stateful sets because if the pod is in terminating state, stateful set does not allow you to create a new, new pod. It is a deployment, so you use a deployment pod, you know, I mean, it's a stateful pod. Uh, I wanted to talk about the goals here of this feature. The goal is to actually help increase availability for stateful workloads because, as we saw, it can take like approximately 11 minutes for your container of the pod to come back online. And we want to handle such non-recoverable cases when hardware goes down or the OS is broken. There has also been talks about node and control plane partitioning in case node shutdowns. But it is not included in goal because when a node is not ready, it could be due to a variety of reasons. One could be due to a split of the network. And we really don't know if the node is not ready because the network is unreachable or the node actually went into a non-graceful shutdown. There is no goals to also have some n-cluster logic to handle such partitioning. Let us take a look at how the graceful shutdown, non-graceful shutdown works. So we use the native taint APIs of Kubernetes in this case and as of now, to utilize this feature, one will have to do manual steps. And what happens is once you figure out that a node has went 
into a shutdown non-gracefully, you apply this well-known taint that is node.kubernetes.io out of service. And once you do that, there is two steps that is happening behind the scenes. What happens is the pod GC controller deletes the pod that do not have a matching toleration, and it deletes it forcefully. And after that, a task detach controller is going to quickly do a force volume detach operation so that the newer pod that might get spawned on a newer node, the volume gets attached successfully. If you want to use this feature, you'll have to enable the feature gate because this is still in alpha. And the feature, is, the feature gate name is node out of service volume detach. You have to set this flag true in cube controller manager. And once you do that, you just have to utilize the taint. And if you, if you know that a node has went into shutdown non-gracefully, you can just use the taint command that you can see on the screen. It is a well-known taint, node.kubernetes.io out of service taint. There can be cases in non-graceful shutdown when the node comes back online and there are no side effects to that, but you just are required to manually remove the taint once, once the node comes back online. Um, after all, the pods have moved to a new node. If you are not doing so, the only side effect will be that the newer pods that are going to be created on the cluster will not get scheduled onto this node. Now, this is one more experiment that I did with this feature. Um, I enabled the non-graceful shutdown feature. I took a Kubernetes version that has this feature. This time I created a stateful set, did the same shutdown via the vSphere UI, and observed that after five minutes, the pod changed to terminating state. And I used the kubectl taint command to taint the node, because now I know this is the pod which went into a non-graceful shutdown. And the pod immediately failed over to a different healthy node. And it didn't have had to wait like six minutes for the pod to come to running state. And just a caution here, whenever you are trying to utilize this feature, just make sure that your node has really went into a non-graceful shutdown and you are tainting that particular node. We can see a demo here of this particular thing. I've recorded it. Let us get started for a demo on non-graceful shutdown feature. I have access to a three node Kubernetes cluster, which is on GKE, and it has all the alpha features enabled so that we can test non-graceful shutdown feature. First of all, I'm going to create a stateful set. This is the stateful set YAML. It has three replicas and it is using this volume claim template, which is STS pod PVC. Oops, let me just apply. Let us see the pods came to running state or not. We'll wait for a while. Let us check once more. Okay, now all the pods are in running state. Let us see which nodes these pods are scheduled on. Awesome. What I will try to do now is I'll try to do a non-graceful shutdown. And to mimic that, what I will do is I'll SSH onto this node. So I'm going to do a non-graceful shutdown for this node. And for that, I'm going to SSH into this node. 
and stop the cubelet there. Once I do that, this node should go into not ready state and the pods running on this node should go into terminating state. So basically, STS pod 2 and STS pod 0 should go into terminating state. That's the expectation. Let's see what happens. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to SSH to this node. Let us see the status of kubelet. It is running fine. And now I'm going to shut down the kubelet. Let's verify it. Okay, the kubelet is now stopped. Let us go back to the terminal and I'm going to check the status of the node. It can take a little while for the status to update here. Let us check the status once more. Okay, now this node has a not ready status. And let us check what is the state of the pods. The pods are still in running state and it can take like approximately five minutes for this pods to get into terminating state. So let us wait for that. Let us check the status of pods once more. And now we can see that approximately after five minutes or so, these pods are into terminating state. And from here, if we do nothing about this, then these pods are going to be stuck into this state. So let us do one more experiment now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to forcefully terminate these two pods and see what happens. kubectl delete pod hyphen hyphen force Stiers pod zero, Stiers pod two. I have forcefully deleted these two parts. And we can see that Stiers pod zero has been scheduled onto a different node and STS pod two cannot come up until this STS pod zero comes online. And that's how stateful sets work. So let us describe this pod. And we can see an error is reported from a task DTAS controller that is multi attacher. And let's do. Right, so this is the problem that we are into now. So what I'll do now is I'll wait for like six minutes. And if we do so, this pod should come to running state because this is the default timeout period for this volume detach to happen. And once that happens, this pod will be able to successfully attach the volume. Let us see what is the state of pods now. Okay, now we can see that the STS pods zero has came to running state. And because this came to running state, STS pod two was created and it, it also went into running state. So, but we have to wait like for a considerable amount of time. And this is unfavorable. Now I'm going to repeat the same experiment, but this time I'm going to utilize the non-graceful shutdown feature and realize how it helps here. So, but before that, let me just start the kubelet back onto that node.
the kubelet is started and let us see what's the status of the nodes now okay now we have all the nodes in ready state i'm going to repeat this experiment and let us say this time i'm going to do a non-graceful set down for this particular node let me ssh into this node Check the status of kubelet. Sorry. It's running fine. Now I'm going to stop the kubelet. The kubelet is stopped now. kubectl get node again it can take a while before this no node comes to not ready state let us check the status okay now this node is not ready so now i know that this node went into a non graceful set down because I just simulated it by doing a shutdown of kubelet, what I can do now is I can use non-graceful shutdown feature. And to do so, I'm going to taint this node using kubectl taint. Let us do that. So that will be kubectl taint node. node name and we'll use the well-known taint let me just pull that right but before tainting this node actually let us look at the paths once more and we can see that all the pods are in running state, but this particular pod will go into terminating state and it can take a little while. So now let us just taint this node. I'll just copy this command till here. This node is tainted. Now let us check the pod. This pod now got into terminating state immediately because of the tent policies. And a new pod got scheduled onto a different node, that is the node ending with 6kps. And it is in container creating state now. Let's check once more. Awesome. Now this pod came to running state. So we can see that the pod came back online fairly quickly and we didn't have to wait like much longer. So that is it I wanted to show in this demo. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I would like to invite Jim Jing to continue further. So uh, we talked about how graceful and non-graceful shutdown works. Now uh, let's talk about our next steps. Uh, so right now we are targeting beta in 1.26 for this uh, non-graceful no shutdown feature. And then depending on feedback, we're planning to move this to GA in the future. Uh, so right now this approach uh, 
involves a manual step for the user to apply a out-of-service taint on the shutdown node. We are looking into how to automate this process and see if we can detect the shutdown and apply the taint automatically and reboot if needed. So while working on this feature, we did look into several alternative approaches. In the earlier version of this cap, uh, we have this uh, safe detach approach while we are trying to introduce a safe detach boolean in the CSI driver spec. So a CSI driver can opt into this feature. Uh, then when the warning attachment is deleted, CSI driver will get called, uh, try to detach the volume. CSI driver needs to make sure it is safe to detach and only detach if uh, it is fine to detach. Uh, but uh, the, the problem, of course, is the CSI driver needs to have this knowledge. We are not sure if that's possible. It's possible for every CSI driver. Uh, but we will be looking into this approach again in our next step. And uh, the second alternative that we uh, evaluated is node fencing. Uh, in this approach, there will be a controller that monitors the status of the nodes. Uh, and if the node went, to, went into not, not ready status, it's going to create this uh, node fence CRD and work on node fencing. This, this requires a node fencing method to be defined, and user need to specify the reboot command. Uh, so we look at this approach, we thought it's uh, intrusive for a reboot command to be required in, in Kubernetes, so we didn't uh, go with this approach, but again, we will look into this again in our next steps. There are a few other uh, approaches. There is a CSI force detach proposal, uh, planning to propose some new capabilities in CSI controller and uh, node. Uh, and, and also, there is this uh, Portman project it also uh, watches the status of the nodes, and if it is not ready, uh, it's going to check from the storage side to see if there is still I.O. And if there is no I.O., then it's going to forcefully delete the, uh, detach the volumes and clean up the pods. So we are going to look at all these alternatives and they're trying to decide uh, what is the best alternative, what's the best way for us to move forward. I want to give a, a big shout out to everyone who is uh, involved in this uh, project. Of course, there are a lot more people who have contributed than what we have shown here. Uh, so in, we've included uh, some blogs link here. There's a graceful no shutdown beta blog, and there's a non graceful no shutdown alpha blog here. And also, if you are interested in this project, please uh, join us and uh, get involved in SIG Storage and SIG Node. Let's work on this together. Here's the QR code. Please scan it and uh, provide feedback. That's the end of the session. Thank you. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, Ashutosh. If you have a question, please raise your hand. So if I wanted to test using the taint right now, is that available in a version of Kubernetes or? Yes, it's already there. It's alpha right now, but we are trying to move that to beta. But what, what version of Kubernetes is that available in? It is alpha. OK. So I think you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I need, let me use this. Can you uh, yeah, yeah, so, so you're asking the feature. It's in uh, 1.24 is the alpha feature. Uh, but we are trying to move it to beta in 1.26. Okay, so you just need to enable the feature gate and then you can test yes. it. Yes. Great, and question, I'm very aware of this, uh, this situation. In my experience with RWO volumes, it never gets out of terminate. I mean, I, I know you said after six minutes, well, this six minutes, another six minutes. Is there a condition which it would never get out of terminate for RWO volumes? Well, so you need to 
uh, well, so if you want to, you want to use this feature, right? Are you going to, if you're no, not no, trying, without, well, you don't, I'm, I'm without sorry. this feature, without this feature, it's going to be in this uh, terminating state forever if the no, if the shutdown node does not come back. Okay, because I thought you showed that after like six minutes, the, no, the vault. Yes. I mean, yeah, uh, that. that is for if the pod is managed by deployment controller, okay. because in case of deployment, you know, you can have the pod come up again, de depending on like policies in your uh, deployment. But in case of stateful set, if your pod is into terminating state, you know, the newer pod won't come up until it like terminates. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, or you have to, you know, forcefully delete it and delete the volume attachments. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So, if a node is not healthy state, what if I just delete do a coop control delete node from the cluster? Will that uh, solve the issue? Uh, um, if you just do a cube control delete of the node. I don't think it will. That's a great uh, what, what, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, the question is uh, uh, if I don't, uh, so with the current Kubernetes version, and then if we detect one node is not healthy, and then I force delete a node from the cluster, would that uh, solve the issue of the uh, volume get stuck in, you know, not uh, reattach? Do, do you understand that? I, I don't understand yeah, the question. Yeah, I don't think that's going to solve this problem um, yeah. because you still need to be able to um, kind of delete the original pod, but if the original node is not there anymore, you can't even delete that pod. The kubelet is not there to delete that, right? So you still need to have a way to delete your pod. The, so for the stable set, you can only have like one pod, like the, the, the name. Uh, has to be just like, you can only have like one unique name, right? So you can't really like have the pod created on uh, like two nodes at the same time. I have another question. So during the node rebalancing, one of the common thing happening is that cloud provider take few nodes out from the rotation. Will this feature help there or not? If, if you have a shutdown, if during, if during rebalancing, you have to figure out what kind of shutdown it is and uh, if it does not trigger, if it trigger, if it is not a graceful shutdown, it will help. But right now, you have to manually taint the nodes, and you have to actually know what are those nodes that are going out of the cluster, and then you can utilize this feature. Don't we apply across the node this feature, or only for? Uh, right now, you have to taint nodes individually. Yeah, and maybe you know going further. I can't com comment anything, but you know we can. You know it's an alpha and going to beta, and we can think of automating it and you know maybe spanning over a set of nodes. So yeah, we don't Thank know you. now. Hi. Thank you. Um, have you tested graceful shutdown on um, say pods that have pod disruption budgets? Like say you can't have less than one of this pod and you try to initiate a graceful shutdown on a node, do you know what happens? I don't think I have tested I, that. Have you tried that? I, I have not like personally tried graceful shutdown. Gotcha. But yeah, we can talk more about that you know, okay. offline. Yeah. Do you have, do you have a, a guess as to what would happen uh, in a case of a non-graceful shutdown either? Or is that something we can, I can ask you all. Sure. Off. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar question, like, when you drain a node, right, uh, like, um, do we have to 
uh, follow it up with a non-graceful shutdown. If there are uh, part disruption budget or any other things allow, not allowing a part to come down, right? Um, I don't think so because you do these steps uh -huh. when you know that you have a non-graceful shutdown and usually those kind of shutdowns will not be under your control like at most times. So, you know, once you know that this node is into a shutdown, then you follow these steps. And the grace, if you are talking about draining, what I was mentioning on the slide is, you know, when, even if it was a graceful shutdown, you know, there, there are some shutdown, you know, for which we can take precautionary steps, but we couldn't because the graceful shutdown feature was not there. And you had to manually go and drain the nodes and do all the stuff. But now because we have this graceful shutdown feature, you really do not require to, you know, do all the stuff. And Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure about how it will count the pod disruption policies, but yeah, I need to check. Yeah, but in general, the idea is uh, you'll have pods marked critical pods or regular pods according to the policies, and you basically configure parameters on Kubelet. For example, you have 30 seconds for graceful shutdown. You can take offline. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I, we can talk more on that. Yeah. yeah sir. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.